was 7 February 1819. We are also very fortunate in the same folder in the uh, National Archives of UK, they have this, by this most likely the same artist, the handwriting is the same, the pattern is the same, April 1819. So this guy came back, he drew this, he drew the scene of Singapore again. But the scale was a bit different, but notice this is the Singapore town. The hill has been cleared, as they said. This is Singapore Hill, or Raffles Hill, or Government Hill, or Data Fort Canning. Singapore River is right here. Notice there's still mast, so the ships are still anchored there. You can still sail there, European ships like me. And unfortunately, we didn't see what's happening at the Sultan Hussein's compound. So yes, it's bustling, it's growing, it's, you know, more people are coming. Uh, <coughs> and Raffles spent a lot of time uh, in his letters uh, talking about defenses. It goes on and on, right? When you the previous letter of all these things, he went to the extent of explaining that, oh, you know, the principal battery has completed, the guns mounted, the cantonments, cantonments is just an old archaic term for military base or military camp, right? So like uh, Cantonment Road in Singapore. Why is it called Cantonment Road, the police station? Because that was the military base. So the first military camp was in the Padang when they first landed. They just squatted there. And of course, it's a, it's a open space. It's easy to set up your tents. They squatted there for some time, and then finally they moved off to uh, uh, Cantonment Road. Uh, and some of you in my generation remember Seapoy Sea Point Lines uh, Secondary School or something like that along near SGH, the Singapore General Hospital. Seapoy Lines, right? The military, right? A lot of them didn't tweet them off here. So he spent a lot of time talking about defense. In fact, of all his letters on the description of Singapore, the most things he actually talked about is the defenses. Uh, whether it's, it's part of his wish to see Singapore become a bastion of military might, or he gives a lot of these instructions, and even uh, into a lot of details as well. And here, uh, unfortunately for this case, there was an accompanying map with this letter. Because he actually specified that on point, uh, the point mark A, this apex of the hill. Now this hill, of course, is a Fort Canning Hill, 100 feet from the level of the plain, of the Padang, which extends itself to considerable distance. On top of the hill, there's a balance space of construction of so a small fort or block house. And between the base and the sea, on the lines, the ditch, which formerly surrounded the capital of Singapore, again, the ancient line, so they're using the ancient, well, if it's the, the, the mound or the boat is there, let's use it, right? Continue using it. Enclosing the continental space at which has been cleared and the British troops are now encamped in the Padang. So it's just unfortunate that the map is not included. We haven't found this, it's not in the view archives. To the northward of the point mark B, and between it and the Malay village, a battery under command of the fort of Blockhouse containing contain two or three heavy guns and mortars might be advantageous. Now, the Malay village is uh, Kampong Gang, the Sultan Hussein's village. And another battery on Sandy Point, Tang John Hu. Uh, and the Inner Bay Mark C was this Kalang Basin. Well, not the Kalang Basin today, it's, it's very different. It's, I think probably the area will be under the People's Association, the new airport the, the building. It's all reclaimed, right? So it's probably there. And the Matano Tower at the deep water point in the Tanyong Katong. So these are the area using the 1825 maps because it shows you the area. So that's A at Fort Canning, right there. B in between uh, the Malay village and uh, somewhere around Beach Road, which eventually became Beach Road Point. <coughs> yeah, so I guess maybe 100 years later it happened. Uh, SP is the Sandy Point at Tanjong Ru. C, the Inner Bay, which may be useful the harboring of native crafts, as I say. So the bigger ships, the European Chinese ships can be here. The smaller Southeast Asian Malay ships can stay there. And M at Tanjong Katong at Deep Water Point is the Makalao Tower. So what exactly is a Martello Tower? Martello Tower is a little tower like this, a very small squad, one usually mounting one cannon or one gun. Uh, if you've been to Sydney, you will see this, very popular uh, tourist attraction, uh, which now has become a little <coughs> uh, harbour beacon. So this is how a Martello Tower looks like. It's never built, but he keeps going on about it. Uh, I can't remember why I put this here. <laughs> uh, oh yes, uh, well, there's the pictures of the, the native infantry, uh, the sepoys. And as you probably can tell from the uniforms, it's actually quite complicated. They, they have all sorts of terms for it. And I guess we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. Let me see what I did mention. Yes, okay. So, yeah. Uh, the artillery and NAS cars are now at Singapore. 30 European artillery men, 20 Golondos, yes, 10 NAS cars, and one company of sepoys. He goes on telling uh, Joy Allen, everything is perfect, defenses are set, we've got, we've got plans for this and that. 
the artillery and Alaska is now saying what 30 European artillerymen and 20 of those uh, uh, the Colendos are, are, are native uh, foot foot artillery. So artillerymen, but uh, Indian artillery foot uh, foot artillery, so not horse drawn or vehicle drawn. Alaskas are uh, uh, sort of sailors, marine style. And one company of sepoys, the infantry, infantry so uh, one company is about 150 men. Now you fail to mention that, yes, that's all the guys they have to defend the place. Uh, the people, the Lieutenant Colonel Bannerman, his directly his immediate boss, the Lieutenant Governor of Penang, refused to send him any troops. He wanted two companies to come and ultimately he had to take to, he had to dilute his own military force in Bangkulun and send over 400 soldiers, uh, two and a half companies from Bangkulun. So it's, 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 uh, the defenses are really not that great. And in fact, the company of sepoys go on, on the brink of mutiny because they have not been paid for the past six months. So Fakuo didn't have money to pay them, so they are pay uh, in years. And they are actually on the way home to back to India. So they were quite unhappy to be caught in Singapore to sort of station in Singapore. So you know, things are not as, uh, as pleasant as, as you think. Now the guns that you talk about, say, oh, the, uh, previously there's now like the guns mounted. Uh, he has a lot of 10-pounder guns. 10-pounder guns are like, you know, things you shoot watermelon with. It's a pretty, pretty tiny thing. I'm sorry, I don't have slides for that. But effectively, you know, things are not as rosy as he makes up to be. And he has all these grand plans, but where do you get sources or resources for them? So he wanted to build all these things. Uh, so let's see what's happened. Oh, yes, uh, then I, I had to include this. <laughs> As you go on talking about to lot these things on June 22nd, what is in Singapore? So if the proposed fort on the hill, remember you want to build a fort or a blockhouse, you know, su of sufficient magnitude to justify such an appropriation, I should venture the liberty of dignifying it by this the top fort easting. And if I may be permitted, as this, blah, 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 blah. And it goes on and on, book licking this, this thing. It's like, you know, just talking about defenses, but he just took this opportunity to say, See, I want to call this, I want to name it Fort. Would you please allow me the liberty of uh, dignifying the case of calling Fort Hastings? Because your administration is lordship's brilliant and unparalleled administration, moderate and limited as lordship feels, blah, blah, blah. The general interest of benevolence and humanity may eventually, you know, the world would have to thank the lordship for this. This is like most of Jesus Christ or something, right? So, so, so he baffles. It's really a hand. And if you go upstairs and read the letter, he goes on, he took every opportunity to write these things, and read to his superior. And he will praise them, he will send them gifts and everything. You know, under the pretext of saying, oh, this is our defenses, just one line, right, about four. And suddenly he goes on and on trying to praise them and flatter them. So, Fos is such a man. He's amazing in a sense. So, so again, the 1820 review map. That's a proposed Fort Canning, and if you can see it, there's a little square box up there that, if you read carefully, it says a proposed for or blockhouse. Never happened until 1856. And was not named after for these things, right? Not his things, not his things, not his things, Lord Canning, who was, became the Viceroy of, uh, uh, of India then. Lord his things, of course, had retired to, to uh, Malta and then he died. Uh, so never named that. And um, only happened much, much later. And instead, Raffles built his house on top of it. So much for a fort, right? It became his palace, isn't it? Uh, the cantonments, this Asia, military cantonments. This is the big fat area now where all so-called colonial district or civic district, Supreme Court, Old Parliament House, uh, the new Supreme Court, the new Apple in, uh, High Street, New Street. So everything is there. And if you look carefully at it, yes, this is where the, the guys started flooding. You see, you see a line of officers' tents, and they actually showed tents right there. This is point B. Remember, you wanted to have a point B between Kampong Glam, right here, and the European town. You wanted to have a battery there. Nothing happened, that's B show. Well, it did happen. Uh, another 100, uh, maybe, uh, B show camp, right, the NCO camp. It happened about uh, one century later. So, well, okay, I guess he has more sight. <laughs> <laughs> another error, which strangely was not mentioned in any of his dispatches or things, but surprisingly built. Two proposed gun batteries and placements were here. Uh, this is again where the Singapore Stone Malayan type of thing was found near Fort Fulton, and it was to become Fort Fulton. Remember, the stone was demolished because they wanted to build a barn and extend the gun battery, and the battery road would start leading somewhere around there, right? There's another, another little uh, emplacement there. 
uh, no name at this point, uh, some other documents in the early 1820s, uh, none of the reference letters, called it Princess Battery. And it was actually built. They built the foundation, the seawall and everything, but it was abandoned at some point. And uh, I guess they ran out of money, so we don't know what happened to that. So there are some of these other mysterious things which appear. <coughs> the only uh, gun battery that was in place is here. Scandal Point or Sati Club, right? You remember Sati Club from the past? It used to be there, and that's where they first landed, and they've been sitting there ever since they came in February 1819. That was the only defense that Singapore had. Well, they had a few ships, of course. Uh, but even the, the cruiser, what's that? New House or New, New, New Cast? Well, one of the ships that came, there were six ships that came with him, I'm sorry, I just slipped my mind, was left behind with, with Aqua. Not so much as defense of Singapore, because it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's still quite infested, so it has to be siege to be repaired. So I guess there was a ship on the beach, so, so you see the defenses were really dismayed back then. Right, so how about us archaeologists, what were we looking for? Well, we decided, say, well, I guess around the area, uh, we're not looking for the cantonment or anything, but we excavated quite a lot within this district, in the Padang. So in 2003, we dug a little pit, uh, the Singapore Prairie Club allowed us to dig the pit, because they were retuffing the lawn, so it was a good opportunity for us to dig up uh, and then they can put on the grass. Uh, that's how the site looks like, uh, nothing much, a big hole in the ground, but you can detect a few artifacts that uh, are over there. Uh, it, this, thing, this is a good picture, I like to put this in to explain to people, because I know some of you might have heard this same story repeated, but this is a very simple thing. A lot of people always ask me, how come things are buried? How did it happen? Right? I mean, how do you get buried underneath? It doesn't make sense, right? Well, it's very simple. Because over time, through development, people power on stuff, they build a new water pipeline, and they power on dirt. Uh, this sand area right here is the ancient Singapura, the Lion City, the Master Period, and you can see some artifacts of uh, those ceramics which John Crawford talked about sticking out on the wall. The very black sands, because it's, it's a lot of habitation, it's, it's all carbon, a lot of carbon in it, so a lot of things are there, a lot of artifacts. And this everything on top of it, Orange clay is uh, put in by the British. Uh, the Padang itself was uh, the beach, the shoreline, halfway through the Padang, or three quarters through the way uh, the cricket club area, it was the beach. And they piled up all this clay to make it flat and become a little sort of Padang estate. Now, how does it keep piling up? If you see all these funny striations that look like, you know, the Quilapis. Uh, but those striations are from uh, the National Day Parade since 1966. So every time they have National Day Parade, they have uh, some, uh, you know, like uh, All Blacks uh, rugby game or something, you know, the grass gets destroyed, right? So they re the thing. So every time there's a little bit layer that keeps adding up. So for archaeologists, it's very easy. If supposedly, hypothetically, I find in this, uh, this, this layer over here, you find a NDP National Day Parade batch uh, 1990, then we know that that layer is 1990, then we count backwards the date. So that's how it works, right? It's a law of position. So that's how archaeology works. Uh, we dug around that area too. We did the compound at St. Andrew's Cathedral Church back well, almost 10 years ago. Uh, of course, right now they have an extension. Uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, people converting to Christianity, I guess, so they needed a new extension. So they added in, before that we dug up this area, uh, and we found a lot of sand. Uh, let me digress a bit, I didn't put this in because it's not, I don't know where, Raffles probably saw this, but uh, let's go back in time a little to uh, Sajari Malayu, Raffles' favorite book, and we think about it, why did this Sangina or Tama fella decide to come to Singapore, right? I mean, why of all places this place could, why not St. John Island or, or, or Batam, or why he was in Batam, you know, so, he decided to come here. See, so now 331 are aka Sangina and all the men went hunting. And great was the quantity of game that fell to them. And it happened that the deer passed in front of 331. And though he speared it back, he refused to die and he escaped. 331 folded it up and again speared it, this time through the ribs. And blah, 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 blah. And 331 came to a very high rock. He climbed on top of this rock. And looking across the water, he saw what the land on the other side, uh, sorry, he saw that the land on the other side had sand so white that it looked like a sheet of cloth or silk. And he asked Indra Gopa, I, I suppose that's one of his sidekicks, what is the stretch of sand that you see yonder? What land is that? And Indra Gopa answered, that, your highness, is the land called Tomasic. 
As we came on up, BKA, now in our Taiwan, they said, let us go yonder. And you know the story, right? He jumped on his bum boat, pa, 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 with a big storm, he threw his hat in the water. And then he landed here, and then he saw a funny animal called the lion, right? So, sand. So effectively, like I told you, much of the Padang and the area downtown Singapore is sand. I'm not saying this is the sand, but it is, but you know. But, but effectively, there may be some truth to all this news. And we find all sort of artifacts from that time period as well, <coughs> including something from the colonial period, the Delphi Hotel. So interesting coins from Sri Lanka, uh, Chinese cash, uh, beads, Indian Kanina beads from South India, uh, and more ceramics. Uh, the one on the right is produced locally in Singapore, uh, of all things. The one on the left is Chinese. Uh, we find a little <laughs> pack. Uh, I don't know what they use for this little stone pack. Maybe an ancient martini or something like that. <laughs> right, and again, all these bottles, which I show you, this plastic bottles, little jarlets for condiments or cosmetics. So, <coughs> we also got a chance to dig. Uh, as you probably can tell, often we get a chance to dig in Singapore because someone is building something or, 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 or bulldozing something. So before that, we try to persuade them to allow us to dig. It seems you're destroying the things and we let us destroy it. Okay. Right. So we, we excavated at the Supreme Court, the former Supreme Court, and National Academy, and we investigated the area and we found quite a bit of items as well. And that's the strata story that should have been. There are quite a few interesting pieces, you know, a little bit of gold foil, a glass, uh, very intricate uh, pottery. Uh, the one on the top right hand corner is a, a ceramic jar, a uh, cosmetic ceramic jar. So it's an ancient Niva queen for women from China. Uh, we managed to dig up more of the area after showing them that we found stuff. We can persuade the, agent, the state agency that let's dig up the whole place, or more of it, and then we find all sorts of ancient remains. Now this is a very interesting site. It's not just because of the, eight, the legends of the lion or something else, like but this is apparently Farquhar's house. Uh, we know Farquhar lived here. Or somewhere around here, anyway. So I was hoping to find at least evidence of, of things. And those of you who attended uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Yeo's talk last week, he talked about uh, Philip Jackson. Now, Philip Jackson bought over this house from Papua. So we have all these luminaries, all these famous people from Singapore, early Singapore, all living around here. Well, I guess there's only so few properties to buy, right? So, <laughs> so that's how it is. So it, and, but uh, we didn't find anything from Papua. I was hoping to find a spittoon or something, but we didn't get anything. <laughs> Uh, we did manage to dig up quite, quite a bit of the area and find lots of more ancient things. So unfortunately, the <coughs> early colonial period items uh, are very hard to find. Uh, chances are because of construction and development. Uh, chances are they're not very buried very far mm. on the ground, as I show you to how, how it works, right? So most likely because they put in new fiber optics, new star hub line cable, and things, all these things are destroyed, or new buildings, the foundation of the people is destroyed. Uh, something deeper down or meter down, so you still find uh, the ancient Singapore, the Lion City, massive curious items. Quite, quite interesting things. Uh, uh, <coughs> manufacturers mark on the jar in China, coins, lots and lots of coins, like Yuan Crawford said, uh, all these coins. But, uh, I don't know who's that, but some Chinese gentleman. And a little blood for like, a makara or some sort of a earth monster. Probably from Java, and a very nice little lotus leaf design uh, uh, 